with Kathy Morrison, Wendy Card, and yours truly, Colleen Roberts. Thanks for joining us for New Bern Now's podcast. I'm not sure we dare to do this on this day, April 1st, 2021, <laughs> better known as April Fool's Day. However, this is episode 179. Woo! All right. Yay. And we're connecting you with people, places, and happenings in New Bern and the surrounding areas. And we'd really like you to join the conversation by commenting on, on this live stream on the New Bern Now's Facebook page. And we'd like to know what you think, because that's how we learn about each other and our community at large. But first, but first, we have a contest. Right, Wendy? Yeah. Is it really a contest or is it like, are you April fooling these people and they're really not going to win anything? No, they're going to win something. Okay, good. I'm not Take quite sure what that is because I, I, today's been a day already, but it's been, I'm, I'm vertical. Right? <laughs> That's all that matters. So um, I forgot the question in another room, so I'm going to wing it. Okay. Uh -oh. What? I think they're famous. What what famous company is located at the corner of Vine Road and One Cucumber Boulevard? Oh, folks know that one. Folks really? Yep. Yeah. If you've listened to this podcast, um, in the let's see, probably uh, up until 2020, no, 2019. We've talked about it. Okay. Okay. All right. I think somebody will get that one. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Well, we shall okay. revisit it during the uh, podcast. If anybody just missed the trivia question for a chance to win something, Wendy doesn't really know what yet, but we'll figure that out as we go. Uh, so has anybody been an April fooled today? Like really fooled though. The, the, the weather has fooled all of us. Hasn't it? This is, this is crazy going down into the thirties tonight. You know, I thought, okay, we'll put snow up. That'll be a funny April, the first picture. So funny. <laughs> yeah. I got the gist of how you were feeling, Kathy. I know it's been <laughs> warmer and nice and spring-like minus all the pollen. And then today, whoa. Yeah. But I yeah. have not for anybody to do a prank. I've read lots of, you know, cute stuff on social media that people have done and, um, but I haven't, I haven't knock on wood, I haven't fallen for anything yet. <laughs> but, you know, Wendy probably has something up her sleeve and by the end of this show, we will all be frustrated that, you know, we just got snookered or something, I don't know. <laughs> Gosh. <gasps> I so don't, I, honestly, I, I don't um have anything up my sleeve but you never know during the show what what will happen we just never know so I mean, oh yeah that's that sounds that, like a plan doesn't it Kathy? That, that's just oh, yeah. like a regular show you know what i mean yeah that or if she said boy i really have something you guys better watch out and then made us worry the whole show and never <laughs> did. No, oh, that's man, i'm not smart enough <laughs> if i read me george I'm not a um, one thing, I never have been. So. One thing that is no April Fool, um, I think you guys remember um, we have Football Friday around here uh, ahead of Super Bowl weekend. The city manager, Mark Stevens, agreed two years ago or so that on the Friday before the Super Bowl, you could wear your favorite football team jersey. It could be college, professional, whatever. Um, for folks who had to wear a uniform, um, they could wear a hat or a t-shirt under their uniform or socks or whatever. Well, this year he agreed to opening day of baseball season. You could oh, wear wow. a baseball jersey. So if you think you see Mark Stevens walking around in a Red Sox jersey, it really is Mark Stevens on a work day. <laughs> He is here working today. And that's today. 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 Okay, today. today yes. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. today. And so um, I hear we have quite a few folks. I've asked them for some pictures. So hopefully they're coming. But um, <laughs> apparently in the Department of Public Utilities, they have lots of baseball fans. And so uh, the ladies over there are going to take some photos for me. But isn't that cool? 
That's oh, yes. We get to show our spirit at work for baseball season. I didn't have any Orioles gear, so I didn't. Oh, I you should have asked me. I have the Colleen. wrong hat on. I have yeah. a bunch of Orioles stuff. And, oh, man. Yeah. Note to self, I'll be ready for next year. <laughs> yeah. There you go. And I, I don't have, have I don't have my uh, Blue Jays hat on. So, Kathy, what's your team? The Dodgers still. Dodgers? Yeah. Colleen is the, is the O's. I actually, I was waiting tables in college, and I actually waited on Cal Ripken Jr. one time. Really? Oh, my gosh. Did he and, give a good tip? Wow. He, you know, nothing exorbitant, but he gave me a great tip, especially for screwing up his pizza. Ah. I would have screwed it up. I mean, I, I would have been starstruck. Like, I wouldn't be able to speak, so, yeah. You know how it, like, takes you a second if you've ever... Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I was like, oh, hey, you know, how are you doing? I'm Colleen. I'll be your server tonight or whatever. Can I get you, you know, start you off with something to drink? And then I was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> this calorie of getting you in your home now. And then all of a sudden I had heart failure. Like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's how it felt. I, my vehicle broke down on my birthday. It was my, it was my 19th birthday when I was in, um, uh, I was in Beverly Hills. I was, I was stationed in San Diego and guess what celebrity my, my, uh, vehicle broke down in front of her house. Who? Lucille Ball. Really? Are you she, serious? I swear to God, yes. And she pulled up, and my friend from Buffalo was out, and she's and Lucille Ball was from um, uh, Jamestown. Jamestown, yeah, south of Buffalo. So I mean, she was a huge, you know, I admired her growing up, and and we both had red hair, and so anyway, um, the vehicle broke down, and her chauffeur pulled up, and it was like a Rolls Royce fancy car. But he didn't go down the driveway and she was in it and he got out and he's like, how can I help you? you girl, he wanted to help us, you know, mm -hmm. she got out of her vehicle and I was like, holy cow, she was awesome. So, yeah, what That's a cool present, huh? Yeah, anyway. Really neat. So, yes. Kathy Morrison, what's going on in the um Oh, I've got, I've got a whole world. list, a whole list of things here. You can't see them. There we yes, go. you've First, got tons of stuff going on. Got through. lots of stuff. First, I want to say that the Harriet Marks Scholarship deadline has been pushed back to April 23rd. Uh, just too much stuff going on and, and folks need more time. So April 23rd is the new deadline for the Harriet Marks Scholarship. So, you know, get yeah. online find it, apply for it, because it's there saying, we want to give you money. So put up your hand and say, me. Okay. Uh, real quick, can I, Yes. I bet you Colleen's going to ask the question. No, she said, raise your hand, you know, oh, you know, you want, if you, or get it in because, you know, if you want money. And I was like, yeah, me, 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 yeah. me. Wendy had a Newburn, question. Yeah, I did. I wasn't raising my hand because I wanted to get in. Um, Newburn High School, right? There's right. tips for Newburn High School. Students. Newburn High School, uh, graduating Seniors. seniors. Newburn High School, who's going to go to college, equal weight for academics and need. Um, and there, you'll find everything at newburnhistorical.org/scholarship, or you'll find it on the Newburn High School page. Wonderful. So, uh, Very nice. So go yes. and go take a look and and apply. You have now until April 23rd. And then if you like history, next weekend, the weekend of the 9th, 10th, 11th is, is going to be your weekend. There are seven things going on that are history related in Newburn. Are you first, serious? I'm serial. Uh, first, I'm serial. <laughs> didn't you used to say that? I'm serious. Uh, first, we have the Hallowed Ground Lanterns Tour. That's a, that's a new presentation from the Newburn Historical Society. Do it, Wendy. Oh, hold I, it up. Yeah. Oh, what have you? There's your lantern. I was listening. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Take it with you, Wendy. Yes. Take it with you when you go. Uh, that's coming up the 9th and the 10th um, at Newburn Battlefield Park. You'll get an evening tour of the of the battlefield, and you will meet people from 1862. You will meet Confederate soldiers. You will meet union soldiers you will meet a lady who's a confederate spy you will meet a lady who's a union soldier 
You will meet uh, folks who were formerly enslaved people who came, made their way to New Bern to be free. They, they call them contrabands and they'll tell you their story. So there's stories of, of all kinds of folks. So this is, is focusing not so much on the battle, but all the people that were involved. Yes, people that were involved in the battle, people that it touched, um, really is, you know, the combination that makes New Bern history. It's, it's not Union history or Confederate history or Black history or white history. It's our history. It's the history of all these people. So I invite you all to come out. That's, it's going to be really cool. Again, you can get your tickets at newburnhistorical.org slash lantern dash tour or give us a call 638-8558. So that's the first thing. Then also on the Saturday of that weekend is park day. So if you want to come out and help rake out the, uh, the earthworks, just have a good time. Uh, that's happening at 10 o'clock Saturday the 10th. Also at the battlefield, the North Carolina 26 reenactors group is going to be there. They'll be there for the lantern tour, but they're going to have an encampment for that weekend. So if you're interested in reenacting and, and what those guys are doing and what you just want to learn from them, they'll be out there at the battlefield. You can go wander through and then if you feel like it, bring your rake and help rake up things for park day. So that's number three. Number four, the Earl of Craven Questers are doing a tour at Cedar Grove Cemetery. It's a free tour, Saturday the 10th, show up at three o'clock and they'll give you a really interesting tour through the cemetery. For Ghost Walk, you go through the cemetery, but we stop you and tell you stories. Now, these ladies will show you different monuments and tell you about the people that are there. Um, fifth thing, the palace is having their plant sale, their spring heritage plant sale. And then also at the palace, number six, is there, this is their weekend for you to get your, your free tour through their gardens. You, the, the gardens are open and you can take, and you know, it's just the perfect time in the springtime to take a nice walk through the gardens. And number seven, the Vietnam War Memorial is gonna be here that That's weekend right. as well. It's gonna be at Lawson Creek Park. So you can do, you can do history <clears throat> from the 18th century to the 20th century on that weekend. Uh, there's just lots and lots of stuff happening. And all outside, outside, all outside, so you can you can still you know feel secure, stand apart from people, wear your mask, but still get out and enjoy. Yeah, and, and one thing I did want to mention: Did you mention the heritage uh, plant sale that they have mm -hmm. at the palace? They're doing their spring heritage plant sale. I okay. usually buy something and kill a few. Yeah, and if people don't know that, it's native plants. Right. Native plants from the from that pe pe time period, right? So it's stuff that might have grown then. Yeah, oh. and it's it's important to to grow you know grow local, local you know instead mm -hmm. of because that's how you know things you might find in their garden over, is so. what what they're telling you that you can take home and put in your own garden and Very that you cool. know will grow here. Yes. Yes. Except yeah. for if if I touch it. Right. You or do. me. I'm with you, Kathy. Yeah. I'm good with the indoor plants, but not the outdoor ones. Yeah, I keep trying though. What yeah. a rundown of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, this is history weekend coming up after after Easter weekend here. We're looking at and it's next weekend. Kathy has done her homework today. Yeah, great job and and yeah, lots of stuff. Right now, I want to give a shout out to my dear friend Pat Murray. Pat is the Durham Skywriter. Ah. Pat does what we do in Durham, but she has a show every single day of the week at noon, except for Sunday. And wow. Yeah. So she does it on her own, man. It, it, I mean, that's really dedication, you know? So not Pam, but Pat. Pat. Right? And Pat had joined us. It, we're either. Yes. When you when Pat joined yes, us, when she came on the show, yes, yeah. So we had a cancellation um, at one forty. So um, if Pat Pat, you're interested, I can send you an invitation. You can pop on for a couple minutes. Hey, would that be fun? Oh my gosh, it just lit up. She said, <laughs> "Woohoo!" Drop by. okay. So yeah, and drop by Bull City Hangout whenever you like, and. Uh, Alder woman Jamisha Harris says hello everyone. Okay. Hi. Hi, Hi Jamisha. Okay.
All right. All right. Um, so, do we have anybody in the waiting room? Yes, we do. Are we okay. ready? De Deidre, are you ready for us? Deidre, do you have any? Deidre DeRocher from uh, Habitat for Humanity. She's going to talk about Rotary. She supposedly retired, but she does a ton of stuff in the community. Uh, my sister's house. So she might be here for a while. Hey, Deidre, you're muted. You're muted. Look at that beautiful white hair. You look, you're, you look, uh, you, you look you wonderful. Look yes. I, well, I feel wonderful. And um, before I get started, I want to tell you my celebrity story. Oh, cool. all right. Yay. When I was, oh, I was probably nine or 10 years old. And I went to visit my friend Joyce Halleck in uh, Cape Elizabeth, Maine. And we were on a house tour uh, that involved a lot of different houses. And the last house on the tour was one owned by Betty Davis. Wow. And, and so my friend Joyce and I were doing what eight or nine or 10 year olds do. We were not paying attention to the adults and we were kind of poking around and we went into the kitchen in the house and this very scary lady came in and said, you're not supposed to be here. And it turned out to be Betty Davis and we scattered, um, <sighs> but I thought, all right, no wonder she got put in. Well, I don't know, was she in Mommy Dearest or was that Joan no, Crawford? That, that's that was Joan. Joan. Yeah. Well, yeah. she could have but been. She, yeah. um, she was baby Jane. Yeah. Baby Jane, there you go. But in any case, thank you very much for having me here this morning and I, or afternoon, and um, I enjoy seeing all of you all the time. It's our it's our pleasure. It is. We haven't seen you in yes. so long. How's yeah. retirement, but not really retirement? <laughs> I'm having a wonderful time because I have the illusion of having um, my own free time, and uh, but what. I have had is the opportunity to be selective about what I get involved with. So um, my primary um, project, um, as you may know, is um, my sister's house. So I'm serving as volunteer coordinator and grant writer. And um, just having an opportunity to work with Benita is a treat all by itself. Um, but then I am still connected with Habitat um, by serving on the Restore Committee. And uh, the Restore is what's necessary to keep uh, cash flow coming in to help them build more houses. And then, of course, I'm a very active with the New Bern Breakfast Rotary Club. So I told Wendy, I could talk about any one of those things um, for all afternoon, but um, there's something happening with each of those three. So if I could share that, that would be wonderful. Hit it. Okay. So my sister's house is going to have its next volunteer day um, this coming Saturday. And we're going to, we already have a full, um, a list of volunteers who are coming out from 8 30 to 12 and we're going to be pulling nails out of the walls and um, taking down ceilings and doing more interior demolition um, but uh, things are progressing along very nicely and as you know from Benita's last visit we're in the 1100s campaign. I was going to ask about that. So it was scheduled to end today, um, but we're extending it until April 30th, which is the last day of National Reentry Week. But to date, we have had 200 um, people donate various amounts um, and have raised $33,450. Wow, awesome. That's Terrific. So we've got another month to um, encourage uh, another 800 people um, to donate whatever they can. And honestly, the amounts have been from 
$20 to $5,000. We had a $5,000 matching grant that was matched by a, a, one of the churches that's going to make the presentation to Benita on Sunday. Um, and then another organization also matched that $5,000. And we've had another anonymous donor of 4,000. So it's just been every day when Bonita goes to the mailbox, it's a new blessing. And um, we're a third of the way to our $100,000 goal. And our budget is going to need every single dime of that. So um, that's really exciting. So then the um, Habitat for Humanity Restore has a number of things going on too. Um, this coming Saturday, um, they will um, be uh, at the Fairfield Harbor Community Center parking lot for the first a Stuff the Truck event. And um, we've got a full schedule to go to all the various neighborhoods. We're going to be in, um, Southern Heights, we're going to be in Taberna, Carolina Colors, Riverbend, Trent Woods, Greenbrier, the home place, and we've got a whole schedule so that Stuff the Truck will be there um, through June. Uh, on this coming, this coming Saturday has got a lot going on for uh, Restore because in addition to Stuff the Truck in Fairfield Harbor, there will be a presence at uh, the farmer's market where Restore is always present on the first Saturday to let people know what's going on. But we're also starting something called Have a Taste and we'll have food trucks at the Restore uh, on um, Saturdays through April um, and through May and June. And we're still getting that coordinated, but that will be from, I believe, two to five. And um, so stop by and check out the truck that's going to be there this coming Saturday. Wow, and, that's and, wonderful. Uh, yeah, and, and um, well, it's an opportunity not only for the food trucks, but to kind of get people to come to the ReStore. Um, and also, um, what we have is, uh, starting on Tuesday, we have our April in-store silent auction. And Ooh. the silent auctions have been very... Um, different each month and I don't know exactly what the theme is going to be for April but I've already seen some of the items and they're they range from starting bids at $25 and go up and there's something of interest for everybody I've seen some of the um artwork there are two beautiful black and white framed um photographs and there are, um, there's a, a glass sculpture uh, lamp and um, I'm, they're still putting it together, but it will start April 6 and run through April 29. And then the Newburn Breakfast Rotary Club. Can I ask uh, a question about the ReStore first? Please. So what, it's spring, I'm trying to purge, clean out closets, get rid of stuff. My husband is about to have a nervous breakdown because the garage is filling up. So what does the ReStore not take? It cannot take dishwashers because they don't have a way to test them. It cannot take any clothing or linen items because they don't have the, the storage space. Um, they cannot take unframed um, mirrors. Um, they cannot take... Uh, broken items or items that just need a little repair um, because they don't have that capacity. Um, and they also really do not want to take anything that might have smoke or pet hair. Um, there's just too many problems. Smoke, of course, uh, people's allergies, but also with pet hair. And uh, any items that have any moisture or rust damage. Um, but Interestingly enough, tools that are rusty are not a problem because they can be cleaned up or still used even if they've got a little rust on them. But 
um, okay. furniture, small appliances, large appliances. I've got an elderly neighbor who is waiting for them to get a dryer. Um, and uh, lamps, uh, household items. Um, they are drowning in mugs and books, so they don't need any of that kind of thing. Um, but uh, you can also get a pickup scheduled by calling 252-633-5512. And um, the truck will come and the driver um, gets to make the decision about whether or not something is or is not acceptable based on its condition or what it is. Um, they aren't really able to take um, entertainment centers at this particular point because they just take up so much space. Um, but if you call 633-5512, they'll tell you what they can take. Fantastic. Yeah, so awesome. then the, the Newburn Breakfast Rotary Club has just, um, because of COVID, we were not able to distribute our, our 300 pair of free new shoes to kids in Craven County. Um, we partner with every elementary and middle school in Craven County and the teachers and principals and guidance teachers identify children in need and we make sure that we've got their sizes and their color preferences. And then we work with Coastal Soul on Trent Road. And um, we usually have the children come in um, two mornings in November and Rotarians help the kids pick out their shoes and get them tried on. And, and uh, it's, it's a, a real feel good moment. Um, for the kids and for the um, staff at Coastal Soul and for the Rotarians. But this year, because of COVID, the kids weren't in school and it was very difficult, but we somehow managed to get sizes for the kids that were identified. And then we got the um, shoes and then Rotarians took all the shoes to the various schools for distribution. And so that's basically last year's program um, for Kicks for Kids. We distributed, I think, 305 pair of shoes. And um, we're already planning, hopefully this year, we won't have any more disasters or reasons to cancel our Oktoberfest, which will be at the History Center again um, at the end of September. And that's our big fundraising effort for uh, buying the Kicks for Kids uh, shoes. Uh, and that's our signature fundraiser or, or our signature community project, if you will. But um, one of the other fundraisers that we're doing is going to be on May 22nd. We're having a shredding event day. So we'll have a shredding truck at uh, St. Andrew Lutheran Church from 10 to 12, and then the truck will move from one to three um, to Fairfield Harbor Community Center. So um, that's hopefully going to be a fundraiser. The first box is free, but after that, we're asking for $10 a donation per box. And uh, we're still looking for uh, corporate sponsors if anybody wants to you know, help um, with sponsoring the cost of the truck, they get to dump all of their boxes for free. Um, and, um, and then October the 10th, uh, we, not October the 10th, April 10th, next Saturday, somewhere in between all of Kathy's historical uh, <laughs> events, um, we're going to be doing our uh, adopt a, a piece of road because our Rotary Club does the um, entrance and exit uh, from Glen Burnie Road toward Jacksonville on Route 70 for about a mile. So there will be a group of us out there picking up all sorts of things. You wouldn't believe. Last time I was out there, I picked up a pair of boxer shorts and I don't want to even know the story of how they got there. <laughs> um, but that was not as bad as the um, a part of a, a deer that I found one time in the median. So, you know, it's all relative. But um, those are my three 
biggest projects and events and um, activities, and it's keeping me happy and it's keeping me healthy and, um, and busy. And busy, and uh, the, with the good weather, um, I promised my husband that um, I'll make some time and pencil in some time for sailing. Um, but uh, other than that, it's uh, it's a full life, and I'm loving yeah. it. You yeah. don't sound very retired, Miss. <laughs> uh, it's I've tried it multiple times, Colleen. It hasn't worked very well for me. Um, I I I get really bored, um, even even reading. My husband loves to read and he tells me that reading is never a waste of time, but I'm still fidgeting while I'm reading. You know? <laughs> um, but I am doing a lot of research for my sister's house and uh, for some of the other projects. And I am trying to write my father's story of his time in World War II when he was uh, on the crew of uh, B-24s. He got shot down twice and wow. I've got all of his diaries and his memorabilia. So I'm, I'm trying to put that together in my spare time. In my spare time. All right, well, uh, fantastic. You're definitely gonna have to come back and give us an update, but. Um... That's what I was gonna say on all your projects, but especially the book. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's uh it's challenging because there's a lot of information there, and I'm trying to figure out what format to use. But um, yeah, uh, it's it's fun, and it's amazing to think about my father as a 20, 21 year old, uh, and um, and I was born while he was in Germany, and um, wow. I found out when I objected to my name being Deidre. Um, my mother said that I was almost named Zelda after a woman <laughs> that saved him when he had been shot down behind enemy lines. So wow. that's got to be part of the story. It does. Yeah. Absolutely, it does. Wonderful story. Yeah. Wow. Well, Deidre, it is always great to see you. And you thank too. you for a wealth of information about things going on in New Bern and the surrounding areas. Well, yeah. I think I thank New Bern now um, for helping me keep all that information out there because if I put a press release out within the hour, it's posted and that makes a lot of difference and I really appreciate that support. Well, thank you. And we, we really appreciate everything you're doing. So it's a win-win for everyone. So that's thank right. You. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you well, and have a great day. day. Good to All see right. you. Happy April well, Fool's Day. Yes. <laughs> Be careful out there. Yep. Watch and out. Happy Easter. Bye bye. Yeah. Happy oh. Easter. Bye bye. Woohoo. <laughs> she is so great. She's Wonderful. always busy. And she told me that before that she had tried to retire several times and just hadn't <laughs> worked out. So, yeah. Um, Wendy, do you want to touch on the trivia question and then we'll keep on going? Yes. Okay, are you ready, folks? Um, what famous company is located at the corner of Vine Road and One Cucumber Boulevard? See, I can't believe I remembered that whole thing. There you go. And I and I know what it is now. Yep. Yep. Ooh 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 ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> and so, who said that? Horshack. Was that Horshack? Horshack said that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyway, getting distracted. So uh, we have Tracy. We haven't seen Tracy I, Brenneman is coming on the show. I have not seen Tracy. Oh, is she not in the uh, waiting room? Yes, she is, but I'm trying to. Oh, okay. Bring her. She is with the Guardian Ad Litem program. And as Wendy uh, attempts to figure things out, um, Tracy's actually the district administrator for the state guardian ad litem program in our district. Um, she wanted to come on and talk about a very serious topic. April is child abuse prevention month. Um, and then a little birdie told us that she is also a musician. So we're gonna talk to her about that. Hey, Tracy. Hi, hi, thank you for having me. Yeah. How are you? I'm doing well, doing very well. Thank you. You Have look you awesome. 
Have you been April fooled yet today? Maybe I haven't. And I'm kind of scared to, um, to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when I heard you say that a while ago, I'm like, uh-oh, maybe I better recheck all the emails I've responded to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's wonderful to see seeing you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. You're just beautiful. I mean, you're, oh, you're so sweet. Thank Look you. how bright you have perfect yeah. lighting wherever you are. Yes, it is. <laughs> I sit in front of my window so I can look out on the world. So <laughs> you got you got the sunshine shining. Yeah, yeah. So y'all just right. want to hop right on in or tell us um, I guess a little bit first what you do with the Guardian Ad Litem program, and then we'll talk about Child Abuse Prevention Month. Okay, so I'm the district administrator for the North Carolina Guardian Ad Litem program in District 3B which is Craven, Carteret, and Pamlico counties. Uh, what we do is we recruit and screen and train volunteers to be advocates for children in court. And these children are uh, petitioned into court by the Department of Social Services when there are concerns that they have been abused or neglected. So our volunteers go through quite a bit of training, at least 30 hours of training um, to learn how to advocate for the children for um, their permanency um, so that we can hopefully get them back home as soon as possible or to some other safe permanent situation and also to look out for their well-being needs while they're um, in foster care or uh, some other kinship or out-of-home placement. And how long have you been doing that? How long have you I have been in this position for just a little over a year uh, and prior to that, I have been in child welfare for over 29 years, wow. uh, primarily with uh, Department of Social Services and the North Carolina Division of Social Services, and also as a contractor for the uh, Federal Child Welfare um, Administration of Children and Families. So child welfare has pretty much been my life. Um, and I'm very excited to be on this side of the fence where uh, we truly do focus solely on the best interest of the child. Um, and our, our volunteers are the voice of those children um, and are tasked with getting to know them, learning what their wishes are, and always representing what the child wishes, as well as what we determine to be their best interest in court in front of the judge. So, um, Tell us a little bit about what you've seen over the years. And I ask you that because I'm sure you've seen a lot of sad stories, but experienced a lot of happy endings. So you have a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah, well, and that's the thing about abuse and neglect that I think it's hard for folks to understand unless they've been involved in it, that these are just people just like you and me. You know, we're all one uh, phone call away from, and you know, in one um, life event, you know, from having the stressors in our life that could lead any of us uh, to, to a place where it's difficult to be a mom. And, and you know, being parent, a parent is tough, toughest thing I've ever done. Um, so, you know, the main thing I have learned is that people just need help and we need to treat them with the respect um, and believe in them, you know, believe that they can uh, do better and want to do better for their children. And so, yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of, um, you know, I used to do sexual abuse forensics and, um, you know, in the front line, I was a frontline investigator for many years, as well as a supervisor and manager in that uh, department as well. So I've seen a lot of um, sad things, tough things. Uh, but I can honestly say in, in 29 years, um, I, I think I've maybe met one person in all that time that I really thought was just like, mm, not such a good person. Most of them really are people who are, who need help, who were hurt themselves at some point um, and have suffered some kind of trauma and just don't know what to do with that. So I've been very gratified that, you know, being in the positions I've been in, um, I've been able to hopefully affect some change. And the one that hits closest to home for me is my 14-year-old, um, well, she's 28 now, but when she was 14, I adopted my daughter from the foster care system. Wow. Um, yeah, I have two birth Wonderful. sons. I'm very proud of my birth sons. Um, and then I adopted my daughter after having uh, just boys. <laughs> so my first <laughs> way into parenting a girl was a teenager. So it was, it was quite... <laughs> quite the experience for us both. Um, God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, there, there are definitely kids out there that, you know, that need that need folks who are willing to commit to them. And it's not easy. I'll be the first to say that. Um, but definitely rewarding to, you know, be in a position and um, be honored enough that someone wants to call your mom. Um, that's not your birth child. So um, wow. that's probably my greatest achievement, I would say, is being a mom and an adoptive parent. So 
Well, you are certainly in the business of saving lives and we do appreciate all that you do. Um, talk to us about April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. Sure. Um, so of course, Governor Roy Cooper has declared April as Child Abuse Prevention Month uh, to highlight the importance of healthy, caring connections. And that's part of our theme is being a connection um, and the presence of those perfect, protective factors in families and communities. Our focus is that that positive connection plays a vital role in building safe, stable, nurturing environments for all of North Carolina's children and certainly in Craven County as well. Um, and we all play a role in that. Uh, every um, connection that we make with a child, you know, can um, impact them for life, you know, even if it's something simple. Um, and so I really want to make sure that we all understand what our role is. And uh, for Child Abuse Prevention Month, there's lots of different focuses that we have going on. Um, and of course, the main strategy, like I said, is making those positive connections. We're very fortunate that we have several organizations in our county that offer opportunities to build those positive connections. Deidre obviously was just talking about some. She's a tough act to follow, I have to say. <laughs> With Deidre, I'm like, I'm not doing enough. <laughs> Um, no. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it's never been more important now, you know, than now with what we're dealing with with COVID. Because when families have stressors, it's you know it's tough enough being a, just a family. Then having all these added stressors with COVID um, makes it even harder. So some of those agencies that are are working with us on this Prevent Child Abuse Initiative, of course, include the Craven County Department of Social Services. You know, they provide programs to help families dealing with um, economic challenges, as well as those programs for child protection. There's Craven Smart Start, which provides education, health, and family supports um, necessary for children to get to school um, ready to go and ready to succeed. And then of course our program as well is, is a very vital part of the community in making sure that kids who do come into the system don't languish there forever and that they have good outcomes. Because we know that when kids leave a foster care without um, some advocate for them or someone who's been advocating for them, their outcomes are dismal. You know, they become homeless, they become part of our criminal system, um, and, and they become people in our community with not good coping skills. And certainly with things like the opioid um, a problem that we have right now, that's often what happens to kids who age out of care, um, you know, early pregnancy, just all kinds of things we don't want to see. So anything that all of us can do, um, even the littlest thing benefits all of us because they become part of our community. So um, Prevent Child Abuse North Carolina is, a, is the one that really spearheads our Prevent Child Abuse Initiative in North Carolina. They're a great organization. You can find them at pcanc.org for Pre Prevent Child Abuse North Carolina. Um, if you want more information about how you can be a connection, uh, we really do believe that child maltreatment is a solvable problem. Um, and, you know, again, this past year has really shown us that supporting families is absolutely essential in doing that. Um, so some of the things that you guys can do, of course, today is Wear Blue Day. So underneath all this hair, I do have on blue. Oh, yeah, I got my blue shirt. <laughs> so, so go find some blue to put on and take your picture and put it on your social media. And uh, with the hashtag Wear Blue Day and hashtag Be a Connection, um, because that's helping us get the word out um, about prevent child abuse and garner that interest that we need. You could become a volunteer um, guardian ad litem child advocate we have um, almost 200 children currently in foster care in District 3B, and oh, all wow. of these, yeah, all of these kids need a volunteer um, to represent them in court. Um, to you know, well, and that's I actually have more than that, but that's how many that we're representing currently. Um, so, if you want more information about how to become a, a volunteer um, child advocate, what's involved in that, our website's really easy. It's volunteer for f o r g a l dot org. And there's everything you need to know there, as well as um, you can also uh, um, apply right online and we get that information. There's also many other volunteer opportunities out there. Volunteer Match is a, is a good place to go to find those, um, as well as contacting our agency or the Department of Social Services. We can, we'll always find stuff for people to do if they wanna help out because there's plenty there. 
Um, there's also some free online training being offered through Prevent Child Abuse North Carolina. Uh, one is what is prevention? You know, what, what can I do um, to help prevent child maltreatment? And another one is recognizing and responding to the signs of child maltreatment. I think a lot of times people are afraid to get involved because, you know, it's, um, it's personal. You know, it's a personal situation when we're talking about families. And a lot of times people are not entirely sure what constitutes abuse and neglect in North Carolina. So here's, these are a couple of free trainings that can help educate you because child maltreatment is everybody's responsibility. You can get a kid's first license plate. I don't know if you've ever seen that when you go to do your registration renewal. Um, that license plate was created to directly benefit the North Carolina Children's Trust Fund, which helps with strengthening families and communities by providing funds for programs that strengthen North Carolina families. Um, uh, there are mandatory uh, reporting laws in North Carolina. Um, I think a lot of people, because in a lot of states, the mandatory reporters are doctors and teachers and people like that. But in North Carolina, everybody's a mandatory reporter. So wow. basically, yeah, anyone who suspects that a child is being abused or neglected, you don't even have to have evidence or be sure. If you just suspect that that's happening, then we're required to report that to the local Department of Social Services so that they can determine if it's something they need to be involved in or not. Um, so wow. it's real okay, important a, to know that. I have a question. Um, what if like it's it's a, a friend of yours or something and you really you don't know but mm -hmm. you don't want to give your name do they allow you to do anonymously or not so technically the tech the, the technical answer to that question is that the law requires that we provide our names when we make reports however if you make a report to the department of social services and choose not to give your name they're not they still will accept that report and still look into the situation and reporters are kept in strictest confidence. So that is not something that is, is revealed to the family or anyone else. Um, so so I, yeah, right. absolutely. I'm just thinking people would be more apt to yes. report. So. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. understood. And there's also another important law that we want people to be aware of, which is the North Carolina Safe Surrender Law. Um, and this is one that allows a parent to leave their infant who is up to seven days old with any responsible adult legally and anonymously. And of course that's to prevent those tragic situations of infants being left um, to die or become severely injured because people are afraid. Um, so we wanna make sure that that information gets out there. Wow. Uh, yeah. So it's so not sure. again, it's not the, it's not the fire in station or church it's well yeah it's it's not what's in some states they have what's called a safe harbor law where you can leave them at a place in North Carolina it needs to be with a person so a responsible okay. adult so it really can be anyone as long as the person's leaving them with someone who's deemed responsible mm -hmm. however then that person is supposed to call the department of social services and or law enforcement not just keep the baby <laughs> so, right right right, so right that is important that they follow up <laughs> yeah uh, because don't keep the baby. No, don't have to call, call social services so that they can make sure you know everything works out well for that child. So yeah, um, and then of course if if you you know there's other ways to help our program as well. Even if you don't want to be a volunteer, if you will let me come and talk to you about our program and also about preventing child abuse, I'm willing to come anywhere. Um, I'll come to the I, I don't know any anywhere the deer hunters clubs, the quilters. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and let you know about guardian ad litem so because it's such an important uh an important program and we definitely need volunteers and we are concerned that with covid as kids get back to school full time educators are one of our largest reporters in the state and so we are we are sure that there are probably some situations out there due to the stresses of covid that uh, we will become aware of and when that happens we want to be ready to make sure we have enough volunteers to support these children so well, Tracy, you are just, she's another wealth of information. We started with Kathy and then Deidre and Tracy. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, and, and Jean says, Tracy is great. And somebody, like, somebody named Gary Brenneman is the best. I don't know who that is. <laughs> you are great. Well, thank you. Yes. And we, we do have a Facebook page. And if you just, 
uh, put in the subject or in the search North Car or NC Guardian Ad Litem District 3B, you'll find our Facebook page and we do uh, keep it pretty busy with information. So, well, before we let you go, so you're a musician, tell us about that real quick. Um, I'm well, I'm in a national uh, Leonard Skinner uh, tribute called Second Helping. Uh, if anybody was at Aquapalooza the year before last, we played <laughs> that, but we generally play um, all over the country. Uh, but of course, COVID kind of stopped that this year. But there's a rumor that we might be coming to, to the Tap That Brewery in May that I've heard. So, um, so yeah. maybe local. So, if you like Leonard Skinner and Southern Rock, you can come hear us there. I guarantee you, if you come hear us and close your eyes, you'll think you're listening to the real thing. So oh, wow. now what do you do? Do you sing? I or sing back up. Yeah, I sing back up in that band. Now I'm also in another band that just got started up out of Wilmington. We don't even have a name yet, um, but I play guitar and keyboards and sing in, all, in, in that band. But I used to have a band called Burn It Down um, before the hurricane, but we lost everything in the hurricane. So that kind of, uh, yeah, unfortunately put a kibosh on that. And before that, I was in a band called Zen Pirates that you might've heard of, so yeah in all the, in your uh, spare time all in my spare time that's right <laughs> we, need, we need to get your autograph when we can get together again okay yeah. that's good <laughs> well tracy thanks for coming on the podcast today thanks for having me yeah it's, see, it's, thanks it's, for all the info thank you're you wonderful thank, thank you it's wonderful y'all take yeah. care you, you too thank you for everything thank you keep up you later time. okay okay bye-bye what Yay. a huge, huge job that they take on. He's amazing. Amazing, I mean, yeah. Very important. Really. Yeah. And real quick, can I bring Pat in to, to end the show, like, you know, finish up what we're doing? Surely. I, sure. Yeah. She's a pro. She had her own, like, radio. She was uh, had a radio show. Like, she's she's a professional, so... <laughs> Huh. <laughs> What's going I on, Pat? You're I know so that about awesome. Professional. I couldn't figure out how to turn on the darn camera and mic. We haven't hey, seen think, you in a while. I, if Tracy brings her band back, she can call it New Burn It Down. There you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's that's oh. a good one. New Burn It Down. There we go. What right. a wonderful show this is. Oh, oh my God. gosh. Today was just yeah, info. Wow. Cool. And just unending information. This is what this is what I want my show to be eventually. Well, you're well, getting sure there. It is. Yeah. Daily. Oh, no. oh my gosh. To fill it up daily would be tremendous. Yeah. I don't know right. how you do it, Pat. Every single I love it. I, I, I love it. But I've been wanting to get guests on the way you do, Wendy. Oh my gosh. Well, we're I'm jealous. Like, you know, the crazy botanist, I think. Is he did you get in touch with him? Did he get in touch with Oh him? right. I did get yeah. Well, yeah, he's gonna come on my show soon. Yes. Thank you okay. for the let me write that down. Because yeah. I need to get in touch. We did sort of in passing say hello. Let me jot that down. He but lives this is such a wonderful show. Yeah. Well, we oh got to we'll just shuffle our guests around, you know? There you go. So, yeah. Oh, and then finish it. with one spot and send them to the next spot. Yeah. Yeah. But we're we're on, we push them around, but we really don't. <laughs> well, and you're on at noon. And you're in right, at, at noon. And I've been doing it for about, actually, my show was initially called Bull City Notes, where I simply. I actually announced, I'm just taking up five or six minutes of your time. I would read my announcements and boom, I would leave. But then with COVID-19, I realized that some people wanted to talk. And so, and I also thought it would be just a good forum, like the way you're using your show to let people come on and promote um, programs and services and events. So I was thinking, well, that's what I need to do. Um, so. I can't get anybody on every day. Like I didn't, I didn't have a guest on today. I did have one yesterday, but yeah. Um, when I grow up, I want to be like Wendy Kerr. Yeah, Everybody does. No. Everybody does. No, I mean, you're the you you had a true radio show before all of this before you started. Oh, but yeah, right? but you know, we, we all start in different places. You know. Yeah. The thing is, is to blossom where you end up. 
and that's you know, and you're definitely in full bloom. I mean, yeah, this is a wonderful show, and um, I definitely hope to you know expand my show like this as, as well. This is great. New Bern must really be a fun place to live. It yeah, is. You need to come down for a weekend. She's, she's never been here, and I just real quick, I just have to say, without Colleen and Kathy and the Pod Squad. Like I couldn't do, I'm not doing anything. I'm pressing buttons to bring people in. Wow. Well, everybody's doing such a great job. <laughs> now I, I went to Wilmington once, but I suspect that you're not, although Tracy made me feel that Wilmington must be close if her band is in Wilmington. So it's are about you close an hour to and a half. It's, yeah, hour and a half, two hours from here to Wilmington. Yeah. So same distance. Yeah. From Durham, right? Probably. Yeah. North, North Carolinians sure don't mind driving. I think that is so funny. <laughs> how people, I, I'm from Chicago, so, and it amazes me. People will go to Chapel Hill for lunch, you know, and stop um, by Wilson, you know, <laughs> let's go see what's happening in Winston Salem. I'm just shocked that people just drive so much here, and it is a joy. Um, we do have a good, pretty good highway system. And I, I do enjoy driving around. Cause see, when you're in Chicago, you drive for a half hour, you're still in Chicago. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're only like two blocks from your house. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it was in Washington, DC. Yeah, DC, oh my gosh. Yeah. So it amazes me um, that I can drive for 20 minutes and end up in the country and see what was that I saw? I followed a street. Sometimes I just follow streets to see where they end up. I was going down some Cornwallis or something and saw buffalo. Wow. Yeah. Bison. <laughs> and I was, yeah, I've never seen those before. I have yet to see an <laughs> emu go because before I moved here, I was reading about North Carolina and in this area at least. They were trying to start oh. a new campaign of the new or the other white meat. And they were <laughs> trying to convince farmers to have, what are those things? Emus? Emu. Emus. Yeah. yeah like so on, the, on the Liberty country. commercials. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> emu, emu. Yeah. So I guess it didn't work. So I haven't seen any emus yet. And uh, that was supposed to have been a big campaign. At one point, there was an escaped one that was running around Raleigh, and it kept popping up as a news story every couple of weeks because somebody would spot the emu. And wow, I think that's that cool. finally caught it. Is that an April Fool's? No, it's not. It, it, it's a real, you know, from, from the news. I mean, it's in the news. It's true. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, Wendy's got the giggles. Yeah, I do, because have you seen an armadillo in North Carolina? No, I thought they were in Texas. No, they're in North Carolina. I haven't, oh, haven't run alive. into one. Yeah. No, I that I swear to God, that's true. See, I'm I was gonna write a, a, a story about like a fake story, you know, in ha ha April Fools, but mm -hmm. since all this fake news stuff and all that, and it's like <laughs> going there. I'm it's like no, uh uh. You know, I yeah, I just so I no pranks, no pranks today. <laughs> unfortunate it's sad but we'll get we'll move on you know we're gonna be there's a light at the end of the tunnel and we you know we're getting vaccinated and how the how are the vaccines going in in durham pat really well people people here in durham at least are acting like they have a lot of sense so most people i know are being vaccinated i got my second um, um vaccine um at southern high school um two weeks ago and that sure. went um, well. And most people I know, I'm trying to say, most people I know in my age group have been vaccinated. And I know as of April 7th, everybody, I mean, all adults can be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. The only, I, I know of a couple of people who are like in their 90s and they haven't been vaccinated, but then they never leave their homes. So I don't know if I should bundle them up and take them to be vaccinated if they never go anywhere. I, I don't know. What do you uh, think? If there, if people are coming into their homes to care for them. Hey, I was gonna oh, say that. Oh yeah. 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 So that's that okay. such a yeah. yeah. Places here are, are saying they have, you know, open slots for vaccinations. So mm. it should be uh, easier for folks to sign up and get one now. 
And the problem is neither of them um, can, can hard, they can hardly walk. So I don't know. I'll just call um, Duke or the county and just see what they do for people who can barely, because both, both they're, not, they're not bedridden, but asking them to walk, I mean, that's asking a lot. That's a lot of work, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. really nice that you do that, Pat, so. So we okay. saved the best for last today. How are yeah. you doing, Pat? What's the weather like in Durham today? Gorgeous. It's going to be uh, 54 and <laughs> sunny. So, I mean, it's not perfect, but let's see. Tomorrow is going to only be 48, but Sunday, 72, and the rest of the week, 70s. So beautiful Easter Sunday. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So is Easter is Easter a super duper big deal in New Bern? Because here in Durham, I, I'm used to seeing like a lot of Easter displays and stuff. And I, I do know that people are um, they're calling them egg hunting events and not really using the word Easter. Because I'll tell you what was really cute. Durham Parks and Recreation had an um, an egg hunting event. And I saw a, a, a little Muslim family with the cutest little kids joining in. And I was thinking that is so adorable. You know, so I'm, I was kind of glad that they left out the word Easter because then everybody felt like they could join in. Yeah. So I thought that was cute. Yeah, was there have been cute. some Easter themed events and there's a, an egg hunt uh, mm -hmm. over the weekend. Mm -hmm. So um, the been... bunny is downtown. Yeah. The Easter bunny is downtown. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Northgate Mall used to have the Easter Bunny. Northgate Mall is pretty much shut down. We don't have any Easter Bunnies in Durham, but you do in, in New Bern? Uh, well, actually, we're going to have two of them because we're going to have one over at New Bern Farm, Garden, and Lands oh. on Saturday. So, yeah. You need to come to New Bern. You, you need to come. Pat, Pat, I got an extra a room, and I'll be vaccinated uh, fully on the 8th, so... Yeah, well, actually, I you were saying how you like to wander. Well, I don't know if you use the word wander, but um, hike in the woods. I definitely want to to check we'll out go the, camping. the, the yeah. nature thing out there. Yeah, I'll do sure. the hiking I, part, but not the camping part. I love to I, do I, the I, video. While you're hiking. <laughs> how far are you from water? Like, are you near the ocean or do you have a lake or what? Two rivers. Okay. New Bern is at the confluence of two rivers. And, and you have to do your hands like that when you say it, just like Wendy did. Just, <laughs> okay. Uh, the yeah, Trent River and the Noose River. <clears throat> oh, everybody knows the Noose River. Exactly. So that's, okay. that's what happened. Yeah, and I just want to say from last week conversation with George, um, we were talking about the, the trivia question, which I'm going to give the trivia question real quick so people that are watching can for a chance to win a prize. The question is, we can't answer it right this second. So what famous company is located at the corner of Vine Road and One Cucumber Boulevard? So if you're watching this right now, comment on New Bernal's live stream. And uh, I think I know, but I didn't know they were in New Bern, but I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, no, I didn't say they're new, they're not, I mean, it, yeah. it, it, yeah, I'm not going to say where they are. Oh, but okay. Well, then I definitely yeah. know who you're talking about. <laughs> wow. 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 Good for. Let's see who guesses. Okay. Where are we, where are we going? We're going to uh, we talk about Pat. Oh, the, the mountains to the sea, the NC mountains to the sea trail. Yeah, what that was the was trivia question no, last week. Last, last week. Yeah. So um, we said what 1,175 mile long trail um, goes, you know, crosses North Carolina and it's the NC Mountains to the Sea. And George said there's no sea, like the Caspian Sea or, you know, like landlocked. Well, it doesn't, the sea, it goes all the way to, to Cape Hatteras. So it does go to the sea. Oh. Okay. I, well, I didn't know that until after the show I researched. So it does okay. me, George, if you're watching this. <laughs> oh, Wendy, are you wearing, what does that say? Does that say New Bern? New Bern Now. It says New Bern Now shirt. 
Oh, we were, so. Do you sell those? I'm gonna buy one. These, whoops. These, let's see. I guess zoom in. There you go. Okay, these, the people are coming together for information. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, you must sell those. That people have asked me in the past. I have t-shirts and, and hats. So. And actually, so somebody should come up with, I don't know what your zip code is, but I, so this is Durham, North Carolina's, you see, <laughs> finest <laughs> zip code. This is my zip code. There you oh. go. So you should, yeah. you should come up with, with a, I can send you a similar design and you can change it to New Bern and you can sell them. Because I'm going to start selling these. Actually, Durham has a bunch of zip codes, but this happens to be mine. But I have designed um, shirts for every zip code in Durham. Very cool. Huh? So, there you go. Wow. Yeah. All those lucky I like sevens. It. I like it a lot. Yeah. So anyone know the answer out there on social media? What famous company is located at the corner of Vine Road and One Cucumber Boulevard? We have had some uh, guesses, Jean Kennefick and uh, Tracy oh. Brenneman, who was just on here. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, we got Tracy singing the Limu Emu song once she signed <laughs> off for her interview. Um, and Jean Kennefick said Tracy has a really, really good voice. Um, she so does. She have heard, yeah. Yeah. Uh, her in the band. So, but we have some guesses on on the Newburn Now Facebook post page. So we'll, we'll when do you give the answer? Do you we'll give, give it, it during to, the show? We're going to do it right now. Yeah, at the very what, end of our what, show. So right what, now. Yeah, so whoever gave, whoever guessed, which is right now it's Tracy and Jean, you're in the, the you're, you're in the running. Yep. So Pat, Pat, what, what do you think? I'm not going to tell you. Actually, I think I have a jar from them. You can you say, probably you can say it out loud. OK, wait. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to do some show and tell. She's going to go into the pantry. <laughs> Get the jar. We just gave a big hint in the, in the pantry. In the pantry, in a jar. Or in the fridge right. if you open it. Yeah! There they okay. are. <laughs> OK. Hey! Now no, no, that, pickles. Everybody got it. Now that now that's a jar. <laughs> there we go. Great job. Got Yay. it right. Yay. So um, Jean and Tracy will be their names will be thrown into a hat and yes. selected for a prize. Yeah, we're gonna draw the names at seven o'clock tonight and uh or sooner and we'll notify you whoever the winner is and uh, they'll get a prize to a local business. So a gift Ooh. certificate. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah, fun stuff. Great idea. You know what? I need to thank um okay wait a minute because I jotted it down. Okay. I think it was Miss Deidre that gave me this idea. Now the Durham Skywriter in every issue has a how to page. And this month or rather in March the how-to page was all about Creek Week, you know, how to help the environment. So this month, thank you to Ms. Deidre, um, is how to get rid of stuff. Because uh -huh. I was going to um, dedicate the April issue to, of course, um, it's always, clean, at least in Chicago, the last week in April is cleanup week. And you mm -hmm. actually get off school and you clean up your house and your community and all that sort of stuff. So I like for April to be the cleanup month and I have the handy, handy hints, um, uh, cleaning um, hints. But the how-to page was not accounted for and I will go um, check my sources and check websites, local websites. There are a lot of websites here or a couple of websites here in Durham where you can list, I have a so-and-so to give away or like a couch or a, a baby crib or whatever. And then Habitat Restore and also, uh, we have a place called the Scrap Exchange, where you can um, uh, donate things to and also buy really interesting household items. So I want to thank Mr. Rocher for that idea, because I, I, yeah. I was racking my brain trying to think, what should I do for how to this month? There and we go. 
Yeah, there you go. Well, that's thank you, thank all of you. Well, Earth Day is coming up on April twenty second. Can you see that? Yes, uh -huh. mm -hmm. I do. That last Earth Day, or when we could touch each touch things um, in two thousand nineteen, I think uh, all the people that participated dipped their fingers. So I got a bunch of oh, fingers. Nice. So, that's interesting. Yeah. And it um, but anyway, it's April 22nd, and uh, so it's reuse, recycle, re rethink what you're doing. Um, there's five R's. Re repurpose. Repurpose, reuse, a good one. think, re... Come on, Wendy. Okay. Remember. Remember, Our yeah. Five, remember. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, I'm looking for my thinking cap. Is my <laughs> you must have misplaced your thinking cap. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So all right. We're getting a little punchy. Pat, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank for you. Yes. Thank happy you. Easter. Thank you, Pod the Pod Squad. Happy, yeah, happy Easter and good Fridays tomorrow. So um, yeah. So all right. You want to go through our that's a that's a wrap ending? Yeah, I think we should. I do too. So uh, one thing we do, Pat, is we say if you'd like to be a guest or you have any questions or maybe even suggestions for this show, um, you can get those to us by calling 252-259-6853 or you can send an email to info at newburnnow.com. We will be here again next week on April 8th. Uh, from 1 to 2 p.m. We're going to do the Zoom live thing again on New Bern Now's Facebook page. Kathy's probably going to have loads of information again <laughs> next week. Um, you never so know. Check us out on the New Bern Now Facebook page. The video and audio are uploaded to uh, newburnnow.com, YouTube, iTunes, and just about anywhere that you listen to podcasts. And then we always give a big old thank you. And when we see you again, we're going to give you a big old hug to New Bern's news talk radio station, WNOS 103.9 FM, because if you listen every Wednesday, you'll either hear our show at 8 o'clock in the morning or at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. So thank you, Pat, Kathy, Wendy, Tracy, um, Colleen. Well, <laughs> um, and then uh, who came on before Tracy? That was De Deidre. Deidre. I almost forgot. Yeah. I found my grocery cap. There was Everybody a lot of have, information. Yeah. We did. Everybody have a great afternoon, a great holiday weekend. Great to see you, Pat. And that'll yeah. be it. That's a wrap. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Have, have a great day. All right. Yay. Woohoo. <laughs> there we go. There it is. Bye. <laughs> You're like, all right. Bye. That was interesting, right, Pat? <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you, guys. Have a great 